Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is Matango. Now, Matango is a 1963 Japanese horror film made by Toho, the same studio that made all the Godzilla movies. The movie was also directed by Ashiro Honda, who directed the original Godzilla and several of the Godzilla sequels, like King Kong vs. Godzilla, Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, and many others. The movie was also written by Takashi Kimura from a story by Masami Fukushima and Senkichi Hoshi. Now, what Takashi Kimura also wrote several other movies for Honda, like Rodan, The Mysterians, Frankenstein Conquers the World, War of the Gargantuas, and Destroy All Monsters. He would also go on to co-write several Godzilla movies, like the aforementioned Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. Hedorah, and Godzilla vs. Gigan. But Takashi Kimura considered the script that he wrote for Matango to be his best work. Now, Matango is based on a short story published in 1907 called The Voice in the Night by English author William Hope Hodgson. Now, prior to this, that story was already adapted into an episode of the anthology series Suspicion, and it was adapted into a story called Forbidden Fruit in the horror anthology comic The Haunt of Fear from EC Comics. Now, this movie was released on television in America in 1965 under the title Attack of the Mushroom People, which is a much sillier title than Matango. Technically, that title is not inaccurate, but it doesn't really do justice to the movie because the film is honestly a lot creepier and much more psychological than a title like Attack of the Mushroom People would lead you to believe, even though, again, that title is technically not inaccurate. Accurate. Because yes, there are mushroom people in the film, but the movie's much more than just that. Now, what Matango I thought was a very interesting and very effective horror film, and it's arguably one of Ashiro Honda's darkest movies, which really shouldn't surprise anybody who's actually seen the original Godzilla, because that's a pretty dark movie in its own right, but Matango is arguably an even bleaker film. This movie's especially dark compared to the other films that Honda was doing in the early 60s, which were much more lighthearted. Now, I never read the short story, The Voice in the Night, that this movie is based on, but this film really does feel like a cross between Lord of the Flies and John W. Campbell's Who Goes There. Now, what the plot of Matango, or Attack of the Mushroom People, is it's about a group of people who are out on this yacht that ends up adrift after getting caught up in this storm. So they end up on this seemingly deserted island, and on the island they find all these mushrooms. They don't eat the mushrooms for fear that they might be poison. Eventually they come across an abandoned research vessel that appears to have been there for at least a year, and the ship is covered with this strange fungus. And on the ship, they find samples of the mushrooms that they found growing on the island, which were named Matango by the scientists on this research vessel. Now, as the film goes on, as these people are running low on food and water, and as their prospects of actually returning to Japan become bleaker and bleaker, they start turning on each other, and eventually some of them start resorting to eating these mushrooms. And in the movie, they start seeing what appear to be humanoid mushroom creatures. Now, what, what makes Matango so effective is the fact that it's a monster movie where the monsters really are the people. It's a psychological character study really about the breakdown of society. Even though it's not all of society that we see breaking down in the movie, each of the characters in this film represents a different societal archetype. And the whole point that Ashiro Honda and Takashi Kimura were trying to make with this movie is that when you strip away the comforts of civilization, human beings return to their baser instincts. Which is a theme that you would see in a lot of horror later on, like George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, or Stephen King's The Mist, or stuff like The Walking Dead, or 28 Days Later. So, watching the movie today, it might seem a little cliched, but you didn't see too many horror movies like this at the time. 
Now, Honda also made this movie as sort of a critique on capitalism and the westernization of Japan and sort of this decadence that Honda felt was permeating Japanese society in the years following the war. And even though this movie is based on a story that was written decades before the atomic bomb was created, there's some obvious references and parallels to the atomic bomb in this movie. And if you know anything about world history, you would know that Japan, unfortunately, has a history with nuclear weapons. Like, it appears that the research vessel that the main characters find was studying the effects of nuclear radiation, and also it's heavily implied that this island was affected by atomic bomb testing. And that's probably why the mushrooms are the way they are. Also, all the mushrooms in this movie definitely call to mind something like mushroom clouds. And whether it was intended or not, some of the victims of the fungus in this movie resemble the victims of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And because of that, the movie actually generated some controversy and was almost banned in Japan. Now, hardcore Godzilla fans will definitely see some familiar faces in this movie because most of the actors in this movie have also appeared in multiple Godzilla movies. You have Akira Kubo as the main protagonist, Kenji Mirai, who is a professor of psychology, and he's actually a really likable character, which makes what happens to him at the end all the more tragic. And he's really the only character, with the exception of maybe his girlfriend, who tries to maintain his moral center throughout the course of the movie. Miki Ashiro plays Kenji's girlfriend, Akeiko, in the film. You also have Hiroshi Takikawa as a pretentious mystery writer who ends up becoming kind of a villain in the film. You have Kumi Mizuno as the character of Mami Sekiguchi, who is a singer who is on this yacht, and she's sort of the girlfriend of the writer character, but it is implied that she slept with some of the other male characters. She's obviously a very sexually active and very sexually liberated woman, which is probably something you didn't see in too many Japanese films around this time. But she also becomes kind of a villain by the end of the film, but I won't give too much away about that. You also have Hiroshi Kozumi and Yachio Tsuchiya in the film. But for me, who really stole this movie was Kenji Sahara as Senzo, who is an absolute prick in this movie. Like, he's a misogynist, he's a bully, and he even threatens to rape the women at one point in the film. And the way he says it, he says it as if he has a right to do it, which makes him even more despicable. Like, he is not a good guy at all, but Kenji Sahara does such a good job playing this complete asshole. And Godzilla suit actor Hiro Nakajima also played one of the mushroom people in the film. And the mushroom people, while the costumes for them might look a little cheesy by today's standards, are actually pretty terrifying monsters, especially when you find out what they actually are. And they have this, like, laugh in the movie that is really freaking creepy. But yeah, Matango, aka Attack of the Mushroom People, is a very good and very creepy horror film, especially for its time. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I could see this movie definitely having an influence on the works of Junji Ito. And there is a villain from the Swamp Thing comics actually called Matango, who I believe has something to do with mushrooms and fungus, so that character was obviously a reference to this movie. Now, in the video game The Last of Us, the quote-unquote zombies from that game were infected with this mushroom-like fungus that basically eventually turned them into mushroom monsters, kind of like the creatures from this movie. So I wouldn't be surprised if that video game was maybe partly inspired by this movie or maybe the original short story that inspired this movie. Now, apparently Steven Soderbergh is a pretty big fan of this movie, and he actually wanted to do a remake of this film, but he could not strike a deal with Toho. But I'm pretty sure the original short story, The Voice in the Night, that this movie is based on would be public domain at this point, so I don't know why he doesn't just do his own adaptation of that story as opposed to a straight remake of this movie, but maybe he does want to specifically pay tribute to this film. But yeah, that was my 
review on Matanko, and bye.